You have to refill your cylinder. So, let us remember this. That you are just the cylinder, you are not the gas. You are just the cylinder. So if you want the gas and you have given the gas, or you have used up your gas, you have to get it refilled. But now, we have to, we have to go to the next step. So we got it used. We got used up. Our gas is consumed. Where do we, how do we get refilled? Just take your cylinder, go to the shop, pay the money, pay the price, get a refill, and come back home. It's not surprising that you got to pay the price too. Huh? They won't give you free. So, even spiritual refill is something like that. Go to God, Amen. Pay the price in prayer, in fasting, get a refill, and come back and be a blessing. And begin to bless people once again. Amen. That's how it works. But it is a spiritual refill. Now what we understand is, the first thing that we want to understand this morning is, that our spirit is not a vessel. Is your spirit a vessel? Your spirit is not the vessel. Your body is the vessel. Amen. Your spirit is not the vessel. Your body is the vessel. So, what you do, where you don't need refill is, you don't need refill in the spirit. Amen? You don't need refill in the spirit. With the same Holy Spirit that gives birth to your new spirit as you got born again, that same spirit is going to remain forever. That same spirit is going to go to heaven. That same spirit is going to dwell inside your body, inside the vessel. Amen? And it's not going to change. It's not going to get emptied up. So your spirit is not the one who needs a refill. It is your body. Amen. Your body is the vessel, not your spirit. It is your body who needs a refill. And so, a born again spirit will always remain the same. It will not become any lesser or any greater. Amen? Hmm? A born again spirit will not become lesser or greater. It will always remain the same. But it is our body which is the vessel. And it is the vessel that needs the refill. <clears throat> Sometimes Sometimes, our body can get so dry, so empty. How many ever felt a feeling of emptiness in your life? You felt empty, but you were not dead. You're still alive, but you felt empty, right? So, sometimes I used to, when I pray, I used to call my body a lump of flesh or a lump of meat. Because like, you take the spirit out from the body and then it's only meat, right? It's only flesh. And then you take the spirit out from the body, the body will die and rot. And be reduced to dust. That's what the body is. But God uses our body and works with our body, right? We have to preach with our body. So the body has to be filled, it has to be empowered. And then, it has to be empowered. To serve God, your body has to be empowered. If you want to do some physical work, you have to go and eat first. Get the energy. If you want to go and do, serve God, you also have to eat some spirit food first. Amen. <clears throat> Your body is the vessel.
so and your body is the one who needs the refill. Our body by itself has no power, it is lifeless, <coughs> and it is just meat. It is just a, an empty vessel, it can be dry. But it is the spirit, amen, that gives life to the body. The spirit, spirit is like, in Hebrew it's bread, bread. So the, it gives life to the body. It sustains the body. And it is also the spirit that empowers the body. That's what we're saying. When the spirit begins to flow in the body, then the body gets activated. The body gets quickened. It comes alive. It becomes active. The body wants to now go and serve God. The body is on fire. Amen. <clears throat> so the body gets its power or its fire from the spirit. The body by itself or in itself it doesn't have that kind of a power. But it gets it from the Spirit. Amen. Now, if you look at the Bible and if you look at the life of Jesus, if you look at the life of Jesus, Jesus also had a body. And Jesus said, He had a body and the body was made of flesh. And Jesus Himself said, The flesh is weak. Which means, his flesh, Jesus also had a flesh that was weak. Amen. If it was not weak, it would not die. If it was not weak, you know, it would be too easy. Even if someone whips him and beats him, nothing is going to happen. But Jesus said the flesh was weak and he had flesh and he had body. You know what? If Jesus also came in a vessel, of course, that vessel was righteous. That vessel was without blemish because it was born of the Holy Spirit, conceived of the Holy Spirit, and born of the Holy Spirit, and not of Adam. But, he also came in a vessel. The Spirit of Jesus came in a vessel, in a body. And that body was the same like your body and my body. So, Jesus also, for ministry, he needed refill. Yeah? If he doesn't need refill, he doesn't have to pray. But Jesus prayed. Why he prayed? Why, why he needs to pray? He doesn't need anything. Why is he praying? What is he asking for? But Jesus was in a body, and the body was weak. The flesh was weak. And he had to use his body, walk from Galilee to Jerusalem, to this place, that place, to preach. And to do ministry. And that body, that weak flesh had to be empowered. Amen. So he also had to pray. And Jesus also needed to be refilled. So I'm going to show you from the Word of God how Jesus went to refill. Here in Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 and 23, you can read. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side. So here, Jesus let his disciples go separate way. While he sent the multitudes away, he also sent the other followers away, the multitudes. Many people were following him, the disciples were with him. He sent the disciples away, he sent the multitudes away. Now who is there? He's alone. Huh? And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. He went for refuel. Amen? Jesus needed to go by himself. He needed to go separate himself even from his disciples. 
Not only the multitudes, but also the disciples. And then he needed to go to the mountain. Why mountain? Because there's nobody there. He needed to be alone by himself. And he needed to pray. Just him talking to his father. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Jesus needed refuel. Amen? Because he also came in a body. But the Bible says, he had the Holy Spirit. He had the Spirit without measure. That means he had the full Spirit. But a Spirit is different from body. You can be so spiritual and yet you have a body to deal with. I can be so spiritual but my body in life doesn't want to pray. My body doesn't want to obey me. It's lazy. So Jesus, he had a spirit without measure, but he was weak in the flesh, just like you and me. So he had to get the body, the weak part, empowered, and then he had to go into ministry, and then after the ministry, he had to go and get refilled. Amen? So, He had to refill for what? For ministry. For ministry, I will have, just see, Luke chapter 5, verses 15 and 16. However, the report went around concerning him, all the more, the great multitudes came together to hear and to be healed by him of their infirmities. For what the multitudes came? The multitudes came to be healed. Now, if somebody is coming to your house to be healed, and you are so empty, you are so dry, ah, brother, I can't pray for you today. I myself am feeling very really dry today after quarreling and arguing with my family members. My children also don't obey me. I'm not getting my salary. We are oh, so much struggle. You go elsewhere and get prayer. Multitudes are coming to Jesus for healing. Huh? So, since I like the continuation, I like the word so in verse 16. It goes, so he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. So many people are going, so he has to go. It means he couldn't pray at the same time heal. For prayer, he has to separate himself. Amen. And be alone. And then get filled. Prepare. And then come back. Because so many people are coming to him for healing. People are looking, not just for an ordinary Jesus, they're looking for an anointed Jesus, a spirit-filled Jesus, an empowered Jesus. Amen. Amen. If they're just looking for Jesus because he's handsome, then you just have to show his face. <laughs> ah, Jesus is very handsome, let me just touch him and go back home. But they're looking for an anointed Jesus. I'm telling you, even in ministry, you're looking for an anointed pastor. Not a handsome pastor like me. <laughs> yeah? You're looking for an anointed pastor, isn't it? Hmm. So, it tells me I have to go and refill. Huh? I can't. I mean, you same with you. Worship leaders. Leaders, pastors. You cannot come and tea to the church and say, come and be healed. <laughs> okay. So, even Jesus had to get refilled. Even Jesus had to separate himself from the crowd. You know, the crowd is coming to him. He had to go and prepare himself and come and then be a blessing. 
Wow. And so, what about 